Good morning. Sometimes you just want a normal Sunday. You just want to come and hear the usual words and see the usual people and smell that familiar, normal church smell. And you want the pastor to say something inspiring, but not too challenging. And you want all your fellow church members to act right. Nobody say anything hurtful or too controversial. As we enter this scene from Mark's gospel this morning, this very odd scene that goes down in the synagogue on what might have otherwise been a normal Sabbath, I imagine this is what the scribes were thinking that day as Jesus stood to interpret Torah. I imagine the scribes to be like most pastors. When you invite a guest preacher, you want them to be good, but not say anything that's going to make you look bad or cause a bunch of trouble after they're gone. Sometimes you just want a normal Sunday. Especially after a hard year and a hard month, like the ones we've just been through. Is it really too much to ask for just a normal Sunday? Recently, I was listening to Brene Brown's podcast, the one called Unlocking Us, which is a great podcast. I highly recommend it. In this episode, she was reflecting on the predictability of change and how much of it we've, we've all been through over the past year. Learning to social distance, to wear masks, to order our groceries online, virtual school, virtual church, virtual everything. And all of that added to political and economic and social upheaval on a grand scale. Just think about it. In this month of January alone, we experienced three consecutive Wednesdays of insurrection, then impeachment, then inauguration each historic in their own particular ways. And if we think deeper and broader still, the reality is that it hasn't just been the past year or even the past four years. This whole dang century has brought with it a pace of change that has left most of us struggling, at least on some level, to keep up. The author Jim Collins observes the following, and here I'm quoting, if the first two decades of the 21st century have taught us anything, it's that uncertainty is chronic. Instability is permanent, disruption is common, and we can neither predict nor govern events. There will be no new normal. There will only be a continuous series of not normal episodes, defying prediction and unforeseen by most of us until they happen. End quote. We've talked here before about how even when these pandemic days are through, 
we're not going to be able to just go back to normal. It turns out that normal wasn't even that good for a lot of people. And the events of the past year have exposed so many inequities. When you know things aren't going back to normal, as Jim Collins suggests, the best thing to do is embrace the not normalness as best you can. Maybe even learn to harness it for good. Bre Brene Brown calls all of these changes and adaptations that we've been going through over the past year. FFTs. That stands for effing first times. <laughs> she says you need to sort of in insert that strong language because they're hard. And when you have to confront so many of them, one right after the other, it's especially hard. Brown offers five recommendations for preparing yourself for this kind of string of unpredictable, not normal events. She says, one, you have to name it. Two, Give it perspective. Three, reality check your expectations. Four, build in rest and recovery. And five, get and stay in fit FFT condition, whatever that means for you. Over the next couple Sundays, I'm going to dive in a little deeper to some of those recommendations for staying in fit, spiritual, emo and emotional condition. But the thing I hope we notice today is that like the times we live in, the ministry of Jesus was and is by its nature, not normal. In the history of the Jewish people, the ministry of Jesus was an FFT, a first time event. And every new year that the Christ child is reborn in our lives, it continues to be for us a kind of disruption. It wakes us up and calls us to attention. And the question is, is there a difference between this kind of holy, Christ-filled disruption and all these disruptions we've endured in the past year? Are there good disruptions and bad ones? healthy ones and destructive ones. For starters, we can say that Jesus disrupts in a way that ultimately heals and liberates. He exposes conflict and chaos in order to cast it out, not to encourage or inflame it. But at first, Christ's intrusion into the habits and traditions of our daily lives and our religious institutions may seem like it's going to destroy us instead of save us. This is what is causing the man with the unclean spirit in Mark's gospel to cry out in fear of the power and authority of Jesus. To me, this is the most poignant moment in this morning scene from Mark's Gospel. 
Jesus has just finished teaching, as the scripture says, as one who had authority, not like the scribes. And quickly on the heels of Jesus' sermon, a man who is possessed interrupts this liturgy to cry out to Jesus, Have you come to destroy us? Now, it's not clear from Mark's gospel if this is the demon which has inhabited this man's soul, if this is the demon crying out, or if it is the man who is afflicted himself. If it's the demon talking, then quite literally, yes. The answer is yes. Jesus has come to cast out and destroy the evil that binds us and literally makes us sick. But the question is actually a bit more interesting if it is the afflicted man himself who speaks. He is, answer, he is asking what is also a central animating question of our own t- time. Can we trust people with power to use it for good and not for evil. And how do we pair authority with accountability for those who wield it? One way we can recognize the disruption that Christ brings from the chaos that other authorities inflict is that Christ is the one who speaks with an authority that comes from truth, not self-serving lies. We can recognize Christ because he is the one who wields power to liberate, not oppress. We can recognize Christ because he is the one who brings people from the margins into the center of community life. But the thing is, when we are accustomed to the prevalence of lies and an oppressive status quo and a culture that prioritizes some lives over others, then the ministry and presence of Jesus will come to us as a disruption. But the holy kind, the good trouble, the healing that is always worth the work, I don't know if you remember a couple weeks ago when I read from the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s letter from a Birmingham jail. I read a portion where he talks about how young people are becoming increasingly disillusioned with the church. It was a sentence that could have been written just yesterday. And it is a sad state of affairs that we live in a culture where many, many people, especially younger people, no longer think of church as a place to find healing, and they no longer associate authority figures with truth. And the church, many churches of all denominations and political leanings and 
demographic populations have earned this reputation. So one of the questions that we can wrestle with as we move forward into the new normal is, how do we reestablish our faith communities such that people come to us expecting truth, not lies, healing and transformation, not destruction? Can you imagine that? A new normal where the church is no longer complicit in the worst isms of our day, no longer a haven for our worst drama and dysfunction, but an oasis where truth is always told and healing is a habit, not a an interruption. May it be so. Amen. <laughs>